thank you to our lovely hostess. As she mentioned, uh, my name is Mike Reed, and um, I've actually started doing the stand-up comedy thing a little bit um, in the past couple of months. You know, nothing, uh, nothing too regular. But I find that consistently, it's kind of become part of my introduction. Like friends and family will introduce me to someone new, and they'll say something along the lines of like, "Oh, this is my brother slash friend Mike, and uh, you know, he does stand-up comedy." And it's happened consistent enough that I find I get two main reactions. And those two main reactions have been so consistent that I can kind of hear the inner dialogue in the people's heads when they're thinking it. So people say something like, oh, this is Mike, he's a stand-up comedy. And she'll say something like, come on! That's great, okay! Well, I'm glad I'm here! <laughs> what do you got? <laughs> and I'll be like, oh, well, um, you know, uh, so where are you from? And she'll be like, okay, I like where this is going. New Jersey. <laughs> And I'll say something like, oh, that's cool. I, you know, I go down the shore in the summertime. Oh, man, and her inner dialogue is going, I can't wait to see where he's going with this. <laughs> and I'm just here, like, looking to make a new friend, you know? Uh, having regular conversation. She's expecting this intricate bit. And I'll say, yeah, you know, we go down there. It's kind of nice on the weekends. Travis kind of a bitch where we go back and forth. And she's like, man, this punchline is going to come out of nowhere. I can't wait to see what he does. <laughs> And ultimately, there is no hidden bit. Like, there's no, there's no, you know, serious science to this type of thing. It's a conversation. So that's the first person. That's that's like a nice, friendly one, right? The other person is extremely skeptical of what the hell it is that you do. You know what I mean? I'll they'll say, "Oh, this is my buddy Mike, and he does stand-up comedy a little bit." And I'll say, "Hey, you know, nice to meet you." And he'll be like, "Yeah, but like, what do you really do, like, for a living?" <laughs> And I'll, and I'll like get into it and say, yeah, you know, I'm in sales and this and that. And I can hear his inner dialogue. He's like, yeah, this guy better be able to sell. Because he's more funny looking than he is actually funny. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, going on, like having a conversation. He's like, look at him, his long arms, spiky hair, real weirdo. He looks like a jackass in that suit. That's <laughs> it kind of like goes on from there. But I understand like why people say this type of thing. It's it's an easy conversation starter, you know what I mean? Oh, this is Mike, he does a little stand-up comedy. Oh, it's uh, uh, kind of going from there. But also we're kind of setting a bit of a dangerous precedent, aren't we? Because it's a slippery slope. Or are we gonna start introducing everybody with who they are and what their hobby is? Because comedy is a pretty, you know, nice thing to do. Um, comedy's my hobby. Am I therefore expected to be funny all the time? Maybe. Maybe. But do we all want to know what each other's hobbies are all the time? I doubt it. Well, let's, 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 let's bring up a couple examples. Um, this is my buddy John. John spends the weekend playing with GI Joes and scheming ways to miss work without using vacation days. <laughs> Hi, John. John, do you know Erica? Erica's a sweetheart. She likes to read, and she uses her weekends to meet guys on Craigslist for casual encounters. <laughs> Erica, John, John, Erica. You see what I'm getting at here? It would be strange. You know why? Because people are weird. People are weird. We've seen some weirdness up on here st on stage tonight. We're gonna see some more before the evening's over. Just more. more introductions? How about some more introductions? Does everybody know Frank? Hi, Frank. Hi, Frank. Uh, Frank likes to travel, and he participates in cheerleading competitions 16 times a year. <laughs> Now let's say this were true. Let's say Frank were actually here and he did participate in cheerleading competitions. Would we expect him to start leading cheers and actually cheerlead? <laughs> she would, okay. It's a, it's a, what I'm saying is that it's a double standard. Oh, Frank, do you know Jessica? Do oh, you guys know Jessica? Nobody does. Jessica also likes to travel. She spends her evenings rummaging through people's garbage on trash night. <laughs> Jessica's nosy. <laughs> It's true, it's true. But you know what, it's, it's not your fault and it's not my fault because society is just full of double standards that we look over on a daily basis, you know what I mean? And it happens so frequently that we don't notice it that we just keep introducing people with each other's hobbies when each other's hobbies are clean. We're not breaking up the Craigslist thing, right? <laughs> let's, let's look at other more uh, double standards. How many times have we been sitting at four, five, six o'clock in the afternoon and we've seen the moon sitting right in the sky, right? Now, all of us know that the moon has absolutely no business sitting in the sky. This is behavior the sun would never get away with. Never, ever get away with. Because you know what would happen when the sun started showing up whenever the hell it pleased? 
pandemonium. That's what would start happening. A 3 a.m. sunrise, people would wake up and be like, oh, no, we all did this day with COVID, now it's here. You'd be calling your friends, don't look directly at it, it's blinding. It's terrifying. <laughs> but the, the biggest, the biggest, the biggest double standard is girls and guys. And most of the time, I'm sorry to say this, ladies, guys have the upper hand. Um, I'm not talking about basic stuff like, oh, she's old and he's a bachelor. Um, I'm talking about like inherent behavior, like day-to-day -day stuff. Let's look at just something basic. Let's look at dating, okay? Let's say a girl and a guy, it doesn't matter what age they are. You know, they go on like three, four dates, okay? Let's look at both sides of the spectrum. Um, three, four dates, he decides he's really into her. And she decides, not the guy for me, you know what I mean? So he keeps calling, texting, showing up at her job, sending her flowers, <laughs> calling her friends. She's eventually gonna have a conversation with one of her girlfriends. She's gonna say something like, you know what, Becca? I think I had him all wrong. He's so sweet. Those flowers, that was kind of romantic. That was borderline romantic. Yeah, a little creepy, but I can look past that. He's kind of cute. I think I'm gonna give him a second chance. You know what I mean? Let's flip the script though, let's go double standard. Let's take that same scenario and say he decides he's not on it. And she wants it, you know what I mean? She wants on this relationship. So she's calling, she's texting, she's sending gifts to his apartment, she's calling his friends. He eventually he's gonna have a talk with one of his buddies. And I don't know why, but I picture this happening to a black guy who used to live or does live in Atlanta. That's how I <laughs> So he'll be talking to one of his buddies and he'll say something like, Donnell, I told you that bitch crazy. Done up and lost your mind, man. Calling me, paging me, texting me, calling your ass, sending shit to my J-O-B. You know I don't need that. No. <laughs> Oh man, it's a complete double standard, but that's the way we live. That's the way we live. I'm comfortable. I don't set the rules, we all just play by them. <laughs> so everybody keeps bitching about the rain, right? Yeah, yeah, June is rain, June's rain. I speak, you know what? It makes sense. It has rained 19 out of 24 days. You know what that is? That's not annoying. That's consistent. <laughs> I think we all can learn a little something from this rain. You know what I mean? <laughs> because let's be honest, when's the last time any of you did something for 19 out of 24 days besides sleep, eat, drink, and smoke? Never. You know what I mean? I think this should be like the new thing. Oh, you want to start exercising? 19 out of 24 days. Quit smoking? 19 out of 24 days. We catch on quick. Someone's going to write a book about it. Make a bunch of money. It's not going to be me. <laughs> but you know what? For as rainy as it's been, I've actually gotten into pretty good exercise. Uh, I've been biking up in the park. And people don't really bike up there. People run up there. You know what I mean? Everyone's like running up in the park. So I had a conversation with my brother the other day. From what we can tell, there are two types of runners. And you can tell it by the look on their face when they run by. <laughs> yeah, you know the two, you know the two. First, type, first runner is serious. He knows where he's going, he knows how far he's been. He's probably got one of those like gay belts with like a water bottle on it. <laughs> and you say to yourself, you're like, how far is this guy running? And he needs like a water bottle. <laughs> So that's the first time runner, and you know exactly who he is because he's got the eye on the tiger. When he runs by you, he's like, <sighs> <laughs> focus, drive, like looking, he sees, the, he sees the light at the end of the tunnel. He knows what's up. That's the first runner. The other runner is running like someone's chasing him. <laughs> and when I say someone, I mean a monster. <laughs> when I say a monster, I mean a monster from another planet that terrified them when they were an infant. Because they're running and they're bad at it, and they're just like. <laughs> and you know what they look like? You know what they look like? They look like that guy that woke up at 3 a.m. with the sun. Oh no! <laughs> Two times in a row. Thanks for coming out of the radio.